Well, hey, Jason, for me, you know, he wants to say something or eat something, one of the two. Take the opportunity to put our musical uh, interest. Acting, in. dancing, and now singing a Grammy with Laura Kessler. And uh, and particularly night shift and and we did gung ho. Really? Never knew that. Okay, it's that time of the year again, and we are here at the Kenosha Kingfish, and I am with your name? Doug Gold, general manager. Doug, what a great uh, ballpark here and uh, team as well. Maybe those who don't know about the Kenosha Kingfish, what is it? So we're Northwoods League Baseball team uh, here in Kenosha. We were established in 2014, so this is going to be our sixth season. Uh, Northwoods League Baseball is essentially college players playing with wood bats so that they can show to Major League Scouts that they can hit. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot easier to hit with an aluminum bat than it is a wood bat. And then we play 72 games over 76 days so these guys can show that they can handle the rigors and the physical demand of playing what would be minor league baseball schedule or a major league baseball schedule. So these players are high level so it's a high caliber of baseball in a wonderful baseball stadium and then we're also in the entertainment business and it's a bunch of promotions it's great value for your families um, you know, we do tickets and hot dogs for, and tickets and hats and great deals for groups. So it's, it's a community, it's a great baseball experience, but it's just a fun time for something to do in the summer. We play 36 home games starting on Tuesday, May 28th and going until August. Uh, let's talk about the ballpark itself. Well, uh, can we? How many does it seat? And sure. Well, I mean, it really. So the historic Simmons Field is uh, going to be celebrating its 100th year next year really? so yeah so it's got a lot yeah and it's been the home of the I think it was the Kenosha Comets of the all girls league from the league of their own movie yeah. so a lot of baseball history here the Kenosha Twins played here uh, so our stadium holds about uh, it, the grandstand holds about 2200 uh, 2300 and then if we activate our our, our uh, hospitality sections you know like our fishbowl and our some of our suites and our the big boat out there um, you know, you're looking at we can have as many as 3,000 people, and we've had over 3,000 people here. We average about 2,500 fans a game throughout our history. We've had over 400,000 people come through the gates here to Simmons Field to watch Kingfish game. So, uh, you know, the fans have embraced us. We've been really been part of the Kenosha community and want to make sure that that continues, and, and they see the, how much we appreciate them. And you got, for night games too, I see you got the lights. Yeah, the yeah, exactly. So it is an older stadium. So last year, one time, the lights did go out. But, you know, it's a, it's it's good. We have night games. We play 36 home games. And it's really an 11 weeks. So it's pretty compressed. Um, and we played some day games and some night games and, and become an activity and something really to do here in the summer for Kenosha. Okay, Doug, uh, once again, this is just a great uh, historic stadium and it's got great seating. And maybe you could talk about, there's obviously uh, tables here and let's talk about what the section is. Yeah, sure. So what we're sitting in right now is our four top table and this is kind of like our our premium experience. So you're sitting here right by the field level. Now, as you can see, there's not a bad seat in the house. So either if you, whether you just buy a grandstand ticket and one of our ticket and a hat promotions that we do for a group, you know, that's $12 and that gets you a great experience and a great seat as well. So again, value-based, everything we do is about value and family and trying to be a great alternative in the summer for people to do. We also have the, the Festival Foods Backyard where it's just a kind of basically kind of an area to put down a blanket and sit with your family. So uh, really something for everybody here uh, at Simmons Field. Like you said, great seat in, in any area, uh, per se. And I forgot to mention the what, the dancing Elvises, or what, what are well, they called? We, yeah, we got Elvis the mascot. Elvis. Yeah, so he's King Elvis, and he zip lines down from there. And uh, I was at an event this morning with him. And then we do have uh, our parking guys are with, they wear Elvis suits because the king, the kingfish. King Elvis, like I went to this, I was at Lincoln uh, Middle School today for a career day and you should have seen the kids it just their faces light up when they see Elvis it's awesome you know that's what this is all about and I always I was telling people at the career fair that I went to a Brewers game with my dad when I was eight years old and that's what made me a sports guy like I got into sports became huge into baseball football I played football at Carthage for a year basketball and to be able to be able to give 
these that kind of memory to people here in Kenosha now to see a dad with his son maybe at a game this summer and to see maybe that's that memory that's going to make someone change someone's life like it did for me to be a part of that is something that I appreciate so much and want to be a part of and that's part of the reason why I'm here uh, and then the announcers booth I see up above there yep yeah that's where the that's where the, uh, the announcers and the music come from our scoreboard is operated out of the press box um, so there's a lot that goes on there. It's a small space and it's kind of cramped, but a lot of things that go on there. We have a great crew that helps us out on that. Once again, Doug, this is just a, a great uh, ballpark, but there's also activities while the game is going in this area. So let's hear about what, what's in the back area here. Yeah, so this is our kids zone area uh, brought to you by Aurora, one of our sponsors. And so we have, we'll have a bounce house. We've got some other new things for this year. We've got some sandboxes. So a lot of times you can't, and I have three young kids, and I know you can't keep, keep them focused on a baseball game for two and a half hours. So we understand that. We've got some stuff for the kids to do, and we try to make this a fun family experience. Um, and, you know, our food and beverage service is, is going to be up, uh, something that we've really focused on this off season, so that when families come, they're getting a great value and a great product for that value. Um, before coming to the Kingfish, I had worked at the BMO Harris Bradley Center up in Milwaukee, and uh, someone that I worked with uh, worked at Levy Restaurants. His name was Jake Zappa, and he's a local Kenosha guy, and he worked at the Pfizer Forum, and he was available, and so I'm like, I gotta bring this guy in. So I, I feel really good about what we're gonna be able to bring. It's really been a focus to say, okay, you know, obviously we're gonna have the ballpark fair that you love, the hamburgers, the hot dogs, the brats, but we're gonna try to make it a little bit better, a little bit more fun, have some variety, and bring some new things to the table. So whether it's some new things here in our kids zone or some new offerings that are concession stands, that's really what the focus has been, just to enhance that fan experience this off season. That's really our focus and I think we're going to nail it come May 28th. Doug, well you can't come to the ballpark with hot dog, hamburger, soda. Let's hear all, all about what do we got back here. Yeah, so this is our main concession stand and so we do a lot of uh, our, our different offerings through that area. You know, we've got some ticket packages that include food and beverage. A lot of times it works through this main concession area. And like I said earlier, we've got a new person, Jake Zappa, and, and heading that and fronting that process. And I think you're gonna see a better experience overall in terms of your food and beverage. But most importantly, we're really gonna focus on the, the customer service side. Uh, Kenosha's an awesome community and they, they, they appreciate a thank you and a please and a, you know, when I go to the grocery store, people say hi to me as I go down the grocery store. I, I love that. So, I mean, we want to make sure that we convey that type of atmosphere for our customers so they know how much that we appreciate them. The fact that they're taking their time and spending their money with the Kingfish. We don't, we don't take that for granted. So we want to make sure the food is better and the service is better. And that's going to be a primary focus this season. Well, Doug, thank you for showing us around the uh, uh, ballpark here at the Kenosha Kingfish. And uh, let's hear about uh, uh, ticket information. How do people go about getting tickets? Sure. There's a couple ways of doing that. You can go to our website, kingfishbaseball.com, and you can order online. Uh, you can give us a call at 262-653-0900. That's our phone number. Operator standing by, 262-653-0900. Uh, also, you can come on down to our box office. We'll be open. We're open from 8:30 to 5, Monday through Friday, and now have been open 9 to 1 on Saturdays as well. And as we get closer to the season, we'll have extended hours. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of different packages. If you're looking at a group of 10 or more, even if it's just a bunch of friends from work, we'd love to have you come on out here. We do some fun things with groups. Um, just a lot of opportunities, a lot of price points, and a lot of value for your buck. Any uh, highlighted events? I know you guys either bring in a guest or theme nights or something. Yeah, so we have Jerry Kramer, the Hall of Fame uh, Green Bay Packer. He's coming this summer. Um, we've got we've got great bobbleheads. We've got a Harry Potter night where we've got a fabulous bobblehead. We've got Star Wars theme night. We've got superhero nights. You know, all that information is on our website, on our promotions page. We've uh, got a great team. Haley and her team put together a fabulous fabulous roster of things going on. We've got a Field of Dreams 30th anniversary. Uh, that movie, we've got the guy who played Kevin Costner's dad, and you can come play catch with him. Um, so we got a lot of fun things like that going on. Always something different every game. We've got family four packs. We've got fireworks eight times this summer, and people love their fireworks in Kenosha. So we got something for everybody. So come on down, take a look at our website. Again, kingfishbaseball.com. 
or call our office staff, 262-653-0900. You will not be disappointed. All right, great time for the summertime here and the fall for uh, uh, Kenosha Kingfish. And, Doug, thank you so much for talking oh, to welcome. us. welcome. Thank you. All right. Looking forward to it. Welcome back, and in the studio we got a great guest, uh, author, historian, Dan Seca. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dan, yeah, nice to see you. For Thank those you who don't see him, he's Thank around you. town. He's a, a volunteer at the Public Museum and also at the Rhodey. And the reason why I brought him down here, he uh, he has written a previous book. In fact, exactly. Right. Uh, when Lincoln uh, met Wisconsin's Nightingale. Okay. On right. the Civil War, right. And now this one we have, which is a, a great book that was actually out at the History Center when we were at, over there, and it's at many other places, um, is the Rhodey Center for the Arts, Looking Back and Looking, looking Ahead. ahead. Right. So yeah. very interesting. Uh, let's hear about it. Uh, why did you uh, choose to write it on the road? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Judy Rosso, a personal friend of mine from the Copy Center, um, asked if I would write uh, something on the Rhodey Theater. There's a lot of tidbit information out there. And I said, gee, I said, Judy, I says, when I did my other book, I said, it took me like four years to do the, the research on this thing. And, uh, but she says, you can do it. I says, well, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> so I undertook it. And it took me roughly three years to do the research on wow. that. I uh, spent a couple of years at the History Center going through the actual newspapers, um, page for page, doing the research on, on the book, all the, all the background uh, information. And uh, the book itself is a culmination of that, plus other interviews and what have you there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was, it was a, a labor of love, I, I should say this, you know. Maybe for those who don't, um, let's kind of touch on a little of the history of the roadie because those, any of those who are fr from out of town, just moved into Kenosha, they see the roadie lights up there. Um, what is the roadie center for there? Well, Back in 1891, all right, uh, prior to 1891, uh, the, la the labor, uh, Knights of Labor, it was a, a labor council here in the city, uh, talked to Mr. Peter Rohde, who is, um, uh, was an entrepreneur here in the city, and asked him, would you be willing to uh, undertake uh, the building of an of entertainment venue here in the city? The only thing we had going at that time was the Kimball Theater, which basically was located behind where um, Crystal's is now, behind Crystal's upstairs, uh, was called the Kimball, uh, Rody, R Kimball uh, Opera Theater. And uh, they said, we need a, a more luxurious type of thing, more modern. And he thought about it and uh, they came up with the idea of uh, building it on the property where it is right now. On, uh, that was called Market Street at that time, where mm -hmm. the roadie is now. But uh, he then, uh, um, drew, drew plans for this, and uh, 1891, the original building went up. It was called the Rhodey Opera House. Uh, they did have entertainment there going, going uh, full scale. And uh, 1896, uh, the building caught fire. Uh, the previous night, they had a party. All the ushers had a party, but uh, it, it was not their fault that the, that the building had burned. It just something, something quirky happened and the building had burned down. Um, it was rebuilt and um, continued with the same name. But then 1925, the uh, Saks Amusement out of Milwaukee, a major amusement uh, uh, company, uh, purchased that building. And what they did, they had other plans. They, what they did was tear down that building. We're talking roughly a $500,000 building. They tore it down and uh, had plans for another building. So the uh, new building then went up in 1927, and it was called the Gateway Theater. And uh, December 27th, 1927, I believe it is, when the Gateway Theater opened up. Oh. And this was, they showed silent movies uh, in there, uh, and they had also uh, stage plays. They also had... This was fascinating. They had a, a Barton organ, a $50,000 Barton organ, made in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And this uh, organ could duplicate roughly 75 musical instruments. 
And uh, when the uh, films are going on, the organ would be on the stage and the organist would be playing. When the live entertainment took place, the organ would go down on an elevator below the stage. Oh. And uh, um, fascinating, fascinating. Then, then, then the stage play would go on and uh, you know, vice versa, whenever uh, we just swap places again, you know. But that was fascinating, fascinating, yeah. Now, I believe in that uh, uh, there's a famous movie called The Wizard of Oz ah, that everybody knows about. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, I believe there's a little sort of trivia or history about that. Yeah, there is. Um, the Wizard of Oz, which is interesting, uh, played in Kenosha August 11th, 1939. And um, the original play date on this was supposed to have been August 12th. And uh, somehow people got, uh, uh, some, something happened there as far as the, the uh, time frame there. Anyway, people were lined up outside the uh, theater on August 11th. And one of the uh, ushers came running up to the manager and said, gee, we've got this crowd out there. What? They're not supposed to be here until tomorrow. Open the doors. Oh. Consequently, by opening the doors, allowed the Gateway Theater to be the first showing of The Wizard of Oz. Um, one day, uh, California had theirs August, August 15th. And... Um, uh, we actually we were, we were part of the same uh, same day as Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Hmm. Uh, the uh, Oconomowoc now uh, in Wisconsin uh, tried to lay claim to the fact that they were the opening uh, act for the uh, uh, Wizard of Oz. Well, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> and the factual evidence pointed out that uh, we were the uh, opening day uh, uh, in the in the uh, Lakes region. So. Uh, wow. That's a good honor for Kenosha. Absolutely, honor, absolutely. Yeah. Follow the yellow brick road <laughs> to the road. And I emphasize yeah. that highly in a book. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, I like the cover of the book. My understanding is this Mr. Rohde? That's or, Mr. Rohde. That's Mr. Joseph Rohde. Let's hear a little bit about him. Well, Joseph Rohde was the was a son of Peter Rohde. And uh, uh, he basically took over the theater after uh, Peter Rohde uh, uh, was getting older already. And uh, he passed off. We're talking about successor uh, prior to going on. Uh, there was a successor here then. P Joseph Rohde was a successor to the Rohde Theater and very uh, influential man in the city also. I mean, he was on, on the city council. He was on uh, many, uh, many boards within the city. It's really fascinating, very fascinating background. Okay, so we went from the Rhodey to the Gateway, and I believe there was a Lake Theater. Was that after the Gateway uh, Theater? Uh, you bring all these good questions. <laughs> <out here>. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of following the time like <laughs> exactly. this. Exactly. When you go, well, let's let's start with that. So we, it's Gateway Theater up until what time? Until the sixties, early sixties, roughly okay. sixty-two, sixty-three. Okay. Um, it changed hands and becomes the Lake Theater. Okay. And they then show movies, what have you. There, you know, uh, in sixty-three. Uh, it became the Lake Theater, and that lasted for uh, maybe 10 years. And then in 73, roughly, it becomes the Lake 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. This is where they subdivide the theater itself. Okay. And uh, you had movies going on, plays going on, on both the uh, uh, theaters itself. And then, uh, so it ran until about... It ran until 1984 is okay. when uh, the theater actually closed down. That brings us up to no, today, meaning that we, if I go to, the, which I did, I went to see a, a roadie play, and uh, the Lakeside Players play. How did they get involved? Let's hear about well, that. Well, the city uh, purchased the building. Uh, the Kenosha Bid District bought the building, and um, the Lakeside Players, uh, they never, they, it's a small uh, uh, theatrical group, and they basically performed at the um, Kemper Center. And they were looking, Gary Stam now is a man that's uh, uh, in, very influential here, a good friend of mine also, but uh, he was the president of the Lakeside Players at that time. And um, through his encouragement and what have you, he uh, actually uh, was able to purchase the building then from, from the city. Wow. And uh, actually the rest is history now that the, the uh, Lakeside Players own that building and they perform plays, they perform uh, fundraisers there. They're trying to revamp the building itself, and they're doing a good job. They're yes. doing a good job, right? Yes. Yeah. 
So if you haven't been to the roadie, come on down. There's a lot of things going on all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. Lakeside Players does a great job, and to be in that historic building it is, as historic, well. Yeah. And they got the, I believe, the Commercial Art Association right. stuff, and then Judy Rossell's, uh, uh, or the um, the Pollard Gallery Pollard is Gallery. right next door, right? right if you haven't right. been down there, let's get down there. People say, well, what's there to do in Kenosha? That's one of the uh, one of the venues to see. I mean, uh, uh, but you go into the building, there's 1927 vintage. You'll see 1927 chandeliers. Yes. Really special. Yes. Really special. It's that they went back to rename it Rody. Exactly. Jones, exactly. So it it could have been changed to anything else that they wanted. You know, it could have been a Lakeside, or a Lakeside Theater or something. But uh, right. Um, well, we just have a couple minutes left. Uh, yeah. If there's no, there's so much to do in Kenosha, there and is. you there also is. volunteer at the Public Museum, we want to give a plug at uh, what? Uh, sure, the Public Museum. Come on down. Uh, I'm there on Saturday afternoons. Come on down. We'll schmooze a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> and uh, where can we uh, get this book, The Rhodey Center for the Arts, Looking Back and Looking Ahead? You can buy it at the Pollard Gallery. You can buy it at the Civil War Museum. Yep. Uh, Alpaca Arts has it also. Okay. Um, Sandy's Popper has it. You can go on Amazon. Yeah. Um, I should him. be I should be out at the uh, Hawthorne Hollow. Um, they have a they have a, a art fair going oh, out yeah. there in September, and I'm planning on going out there. If you if you're so inclined, come out out in September, and I'll see you there. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan, thank you so much for coming on down. It's just absolutely uh, pleasure. Thank interesting you. Thank you. Uh, conversation. And by all means, uh, go out to the Rhodey Center for the Arts downtown, and also check out this book, uh, the Rhodey Center for the Arts. Let's give a big round of applause to author Dan Stigler. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate this. Wow, what an audience. <laughs> and we'll be right back. As a parent, I know one of the most important times to be with your children is when they aren't feeling well. For many families, there's a place they can go to find the support they need. Ronald McDonald House Charities programs provide that supportive environment so families can be together while their children are dealing with serious illnesses. You can volunteer your time at a local Ronald McDonald House or drop your change in an RMHC canister. Today is a great day for all of us to show our support. To find out how you can get involved in your community, visit rmhc.org. All right, here we are at Steinbrink's Piggly Wiggly on Pershing Boulevard, and I am, and we got a great guest here in the store, uh, none other than Gorman Thomas. Gorman, thank you so much uh, for coming to Piggly Wiggly here at Steinbrink's Piggly Wiggly, and uh, what are you doing here today? Well, first of all, I was here waiting on you, so don't tell me you're waiting. <laughs> glad to see me show up. I've been here for an hour and a half, but no, this is my uh, this is my sauce. It's multifaceted. I designed it for uh, barbecue sauce, but turns out my wife and I changed the, uh, the taste of it just a little bit, and it's good on anything, seriously. And this is my second time here down in Kenosha, and uh, had a good turnout last time. I'm expecting another one today. And then next Saturday, I'm going to be actually in Lake Geneva with the other one. Wow. They have one in, uh, in Lake Geneva, and they also have one in uh, Delavan, and I did that one too. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm around and you got to come by and taste it, and you're going to love it. You seems like you've always been uh, doing something with food or restaurants. How did that all get started? I like to eat. Yeah, Can't yeah. you tell? <laughs> I'm 6'2", 250. Uh, just got this particular uh, endeavor right here. It's uh, I got tired of eating red. Don't like ketchup. You don't put ketchup on a pork chop, right? So my wife and I, you know, we designed it, and we had it professionally done. And uh, now we're on the street, and this is our second year, and it's uh, been going very well for us. Um, and do you still have your restaurant at Miller Park, or no? No, I was there since, uh, well, since the stadium opened. Yes. And then I was outside on the side of the county stadium building uh, for five years. So uh, they, they made some changes inside, and uh, you know maybe, who knows, might be able to get back in there, but uh, uh, it's been well received by the fans. I do got to ask a few Brewers questions. Uh, what did you think of their season this year? I think it was fantastic, to be honest with you. And that's not because I am a ex-player, but I am an ex-player and I'm also a big-time fan. And uh, they were fabulous. They really did. I mean, it's like anything. Every season starts off. Everybody's all pumped up and ready to rock and roll. And uh, that's just the way that is. And then all of a sudden they start playing good. Right from the beginning, played good. Yeah, I had a little blip in the middle. Then they turned around, came right back. Uh, experience in the first half helped them in the second half, and then look where they got. You know, they got to the ultimate game, which was exciting as hell. 
you know, just to get into the World Series. But, uh, you know, they had some big time years, you know, from some, you know, from some guys. Uh, you found a couple of good pitchers too. Wood, uh, Woodruff, not only can he pitch, but he, he went deep too, dead center. So that was big time right there. And then uh, Knable, you know, he was throwing his stuff, you know, he came back with that. And then the years that Jeffries, Jeffries and uh, also Hader had, you know, fantastic. You know, Junior was there, he did his thing, you know, and then I'm going to mispronounce his last name, Chashin, but, you know, he had a great year for us as well. Then you look at Yelich. I mean, here's a new player for us, you know, and I told him when I first met him that uh, the fan thing down at uh, downtown Milwaukee in January this year, I said, you know, I watched you play. We didn't get to see it much on TV, but, you know, I, I know who you were. And, you know, welcome to Milwaukee. The other, they're going to love you here. Just play hard and, you know, good things will come. Because Johnny Logan told me that in 1973, and I never forgot it. So little things like that, you know. Oh, and another thing too, Miley, you know, he did a, he had two really good starts for us there as well. And he's wearing number 20. And I told him that Lou Brock told me one day during the World Series in 82, snuck up behind me, he says, do the number proud. So anyway, that's, that's my rendition of what happened here recently. And now we're here with the Steinbrinks and just living the dream. Yeah, absolutely, we definitely. And where can we get the sauces? It is here up at Steinbrook. Well, we've Pickle. already got you penciled in for six. Yeah, okay, you you, know. you, you have to get a half a dozen. Yeah, right. But I'm in about a hundred locations, to be honest with you, and just uh, restaurants, uh, grocery chains, uh, novelty stores, taverns, bowling alleys, pizzerias, ballparks. Uh, shipping out of state. I've sent cases in nine states now. Had an opportunity to send it to Germany. But shipping is just a little insane. It was $175 to ship a case of jars to Germany. And how many do you think would have got broke? I know half the ones that were in the case that I sent to Charlie Moore, they broke. But then again, I'm thinking Charlie did that, so he only had to pay for half of them, okay? So I sent him some cash to, to make up for what he lost. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, I'm having fun doing it, so here we go. We got to send one to Bob Euchre and some other. Oh, Bobby, Bobby gets his. Bobby always gets his. I mean, that's that's Mr. Belvedere. I mean, there's nobody in the world better. I'm serious. Do you still keep in contact with a lot of the '82 players? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, I have a folder in my computer where, if I want to forward something, there's my 15 guys that it automatically goes to. You know, Caldwell, uh, Charlie Moore, Jamie Easterly. Even one of my uh, ex-players, uh, Bobby Coluccio, uh, just right down the line, you know, and I got Vuk, you know, Pete Ladd. You know, I'm gonna miss some names, but you know, when I get in front of that damn thing and I start sending out jokes, oh, look out. <laughs> but it's all been fun. Nice to, nice to stay in touch with the guys. Well, it's great that Storm and Gorman came out to Kenosha, Wisconsin, Steinbrink's Piggly Wiggly, and come out and uh, get some of the sauce, and it's excellent. And uh, Gorman Thomas, thank you so much for talking with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for coming.